Hi, thanks for joining us here at Church of the Shepherd. My name is Jason, and today I'll be leading worship with my friends Brad and Mary, and we hope that you'll do some singing with us and, and join us today. It's going to be a great day. So at this time, before we begin singing, would you please pray with me? Our Father and our God, we bless your name forevermore. There is none like you on earth or in heaven. Your children have gathered to worship in your presence and sing your praises. Let us come unto you, sweetest Savior, our provider and our light. We put all of our trust in you. We commit our plans to you and ask that you bring them to pass. Do not allow us to fall to evil or become vain. Bless us so that we can show the world your goodness and light. Let us be filled with your presence today. Amen. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold peace on the earth goodwill to men from heaven's own gracious king the world in solemn stillness more 
and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore, and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore, unto us a child is born. I want to thank you for joining us here. Add my welcome on top of the one you already received from Jason. My name is Danny Leibarger. I'm one of our pastors here and just honored and excited that you are in worship with us, especially if this is your first time. It takes a lot of courage, even in an online space, to come and worship with a new community. We're just honored and thankful that you would do that with us here today. And we want to actually honor that leap of faith to come and to join us by giving you and offering you a gift. I mean, that's part of the Advent season is giving gifts, right? And so we want to be able to give you a gift for joining us here in worship. And so if you text new to the number on the screen, that'll not only let us know that you're with us, but it lets us be able to reach out and extend a gift. And thank you for being here in worship with us. And if you're a regular, you're a part of our community already, please text the regular to that exact same number. It lets us know that you're here, that you are in worship with us and how we can best connect and follow up with you in that way. And we've had a cool opportunity already to worship through song. In a moment, we're gonna worship through hearing God's word as Pastor John shares a message with us. But another way that we worship is through the act of generosity, by giving back in the way that God so freely and generously gives to us. And during this season of us being primarily online, what we've noticed is more people have taken a first step to give and to be generous. Some people even amplify the ways that they have engaged in generosity. And our church is so thankful for those of you that do that. And if you are one of those people, we wanna thank you and continue to give you ways to engage with us, or maybe this is your first time. And so on the screen, you'll see there's ways to give through our app online, or even just by mailing in a check. We wanna thank you in advance for partnering with us through the act of generosity in that way. And you'll see next to me that there is our Advent wreath, and we are in the third week of Advent this week, the week of joy. 
And with this, as we celebrate joy, we celebrate a joy that maybe looks different than what we think of as happiness, but a joy that actually transforms us and comes from the source of all things, from our God in heaven. And there's this passage that comes out of the book of Isaiah a book that points to this joy that breaks forth into the world, that tells us a idea of what we are celebrating. And so I invite you to hear these words from Isaiah chapter nine, verses six and seven. It says this. It says, a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and all authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. And so as we light this third candle, the candle that represents joy, again, we know that there is this joy that fills us that comes from our God, that surrounds us and embodies us and actually propels us forward to live and act and respond in ways that reflect that joy, God's joy back into this world. And so as with that in mind, I'll invite you just to join me in a word of prayer. God, we know that the joy that you offer us is far more than anything that we could find in this world a joy that far exceeds what the world has defined as happiness, but one that transforms our hearts, our souls, and our minds. And so God, as we continue to worship through song and through word, we ask that your Holy Spirit would give us that gift this season of Advent, the gift of joy that transforms us from the inside out. Be with us in this time of worship. Let us feel your presence here and now. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Author J.R.R. Tolkien writes, all we have to do is decide what to do with the time that is given to us. But what time is he really talking about? Is he talking about our work time or our play time? Is he talking about our family time or whatever spare time might be? 
Uh, is he talking about that time that is right now in this moment? Or is he talking about some time that is in the future? I mean, there are so many different ways for us to think about time. The ancient Greeks had uh, two ways that they thought about time, two different words for time, in fact, chronos and kairos. Uh, chronos was that kind of word that you, you might guess what it means because we find it in our English words of chronological. It is time that can be measured. It's ticking kind of time. It's quantitative kind of time. Chronos is the kind of time that propels us. We measure it with clocks. We measure it with days of the week, weeks of the year, phases of the moon. We even measure it by birthdays. It is that time that is like a river that flows by us and just continues to move on until we see it no more. It becomes lost in time itself. But the second word, the second word the Greeks had for time was kairos. We hear it over 80 times in the New Testament. And kairos is what philosophers and, and mystics would refer to as deep time. Kairos is the opportune time. It's the appointed time. It's the crucial time that God acts in. It signifies a period or a season in which something significant happens. For us, we refer to that significant happening as God entering in. This is the kind of time that when everything else seems to stop and stand still entirely, and rather than like a river that passes on by, Kairos time is more like a deep lake that we swim around in and we get lost in. It's not measured in days or weeks. It's, it's something we experience more as we deeply inhale and exhale. It's measured in laughter and tears. It's measured in a sunset. When a Kairos moment happens, the ordinary moments, the ordinary chronos time becomes sacred. It's in those moments that we experience the sacred ordinary in our midst. It was a kairos kind of moment that Mary experienced when the angel Gabriel came to her and told her that she was going to bear a child. Now, you could imagine that kind of announcement would kind of get your attention. It would make everything else stand still. It would make everything else pale in comparison. Here's how Luke records that Kairos moment in the Gospel of Luke in the second chapter, beginning in the 26th verse. Luke writes, in the sixth month, Kronos time, of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. And Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this be? I, I am a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby will be born, will be holy. And he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. 
People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. And Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. There's a lot of different time going on in there, in that moment and and yet time that had passed and time that was yet to come. But here's what we learn from Mary when that bit of time, that ordinary time becomes sacred. When that Kairos moment happens, we discover that the ordinary is interrupted. For Mary, her normal engagement to a wonderful godly man named Joseph was interrupted the moment the angel appeared to her. I, I, I mean, her time of waiting for a wedding was interrupted by God's messenger. And to let you know this moment in time, the, the writer of Luke even introduces it by saying it was the sixth month. It, it happened in this time of engagement. I, I mean, he's calling our attention that this is indeed a time kind of focused piece, that there's nothing accidental in it. Think what this Kairos moment must have meant to Mary. Her dreams, her hopes, what she thought she was going to do with the rest of her life was all interrupted. And yet, even though it wasn't her plan, it wasn't as if there was no plan at all. In fact, what we discover is that there is something far greater than her plan. There is something far greater in her future. Her ordinary dreams, her ordinary plans of life have now become a sacred journey. God has entered in both time and space and made this that Kairos moment. Franciscan friar and author Richard Rohr refers to these kairos moments in life where you stop and say, oh God, this is it. I get it. Or maybe you might even say, this is as perfect as it can be. It can't get any better than this. I mean, we've all had some of those moments, have we not? They may be few and far between, but when, when those Kairos moments enter into our life, they can feed our souls, they can feed our, our whole being for days and months and years on end. For they are truly those times when time stands still and you become aware of God, the holy God's presence among you. You find yourself in a Kairos time. You completely lose track of all Kronos time, of everything else around you. I remember in my own life, uh, I had one of those Kairos moments. Uh, it was before my first back surgery, and, and I had had a piece of bone that had broken off, and, and it chose at this particular time when I was leading a retreat, it chose to move <laughs> and make itself known and pinched a nerve that was in my back. And so here I am leading this retreat for three days and three nights, sleeping on the floor, and, and I find myself unable to get up. I can't move from room to room. I can't sit in a chair. I can't even get to the table to eat. I've got to have somebody kind of moving me in all these places, but, but I, I'm a little stubborn. And so I stuck it out and said, I can do this. But there came a moment in that retreat where they were running behind and they needed me to fill time. So I said, okay, I can do this. I'll just pray a little bit. We'll just get everybody in the sanctuary and I'll just pray a little bit. We'll sing a couple songs and, and, and it'll be fine. Now, I just want you to hear how I nonchalantly was talking about prayer right there. You know, I was just trying to fill time. You ever tried to fill time? But God had another plan. 
in the midst of my filling time and just saying to the ladies that were gathered there, you know, I'm just going to offer an opportunity for you to come up. And if you want to kneel at the altar, I'll come and I'll pray with you. And, and I, quite frankly, was trying to figure out how am I even going to get to the rail. But, you know, I'm thinking not going to happen. One or two folks will come forward. We'll sing a few songs. We'll, we'll get this time over with. For two hours, not 30 minutes, but two chronos hours, I moved from woman to woman praying for these women I'd never met before. Prayers that they did not even request but just came and knelt and prayed things that they didn't even know that I knew because I didn't know them. I don't even remember the prayers. All I remember is the pray or the tears that flowed and how I lost complete track of time and how I was pain-free for two hours. That was a Kairos moment. When God came near and time and pain and everything else disappeared in a sea of God's grace. Have you ever had a Kairos moment when everything else stood still and it became sacred because God was there? Kairos moments, sacred time, they happen when God acts. It's not something that you or I create. It happens when God is acting in the situation. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, there is a Kairos moment that happens in the midst of their ordinary worship every time that they gather. Every time when they get ready to begin the divine liturgy, that's what they call the, the Eucharist or the great thanksgiving or the communion prayer. Every time before they begin that divine liturgy, the, the deacon stands up and proclaims this word. It's time, it's kairos for God to act, for the Lord to act. I mean, hear that proclamation. He's proclaiming before everybody else gathered there in worship, now is the time for God to act. Man, I, I, I'd like to have that kind of moment in worship too, don't you? When, when someone would just say, now is the time for God to act. I mean, that put me on the edge of my seat. Because in that moment when someone makes that proclamation, hope is born. Hope erupts all around us as we look for God to act. And that's what happened when the angel Gabriel came to Mary. Hope was born. He was saying to Mary, now is the time, Mary, when God is going to act. And that's what happened when Jesus was born. God was entering into the world and acting, and hope was being born. Hope that the world had been longing for erupted on the scene. I mean, imagine in this time of worship right now, wherever you are, whatever space you are in, if someone were to say to you, like I'm about to say right now, now is the time for God to act. I mean, many of you would be saying, amen. I've been needing God to act. I've got the situation in my life, I need God to act. I've got folks that I've been praying for, I want God to act. I've been watching the news, we need God to act. Now is the time for God to act. Advent is all about that right now, that Kairos moment, the time when God is needed to act. I mean, the people of Israel have been waiting not just four weeks preceding Christmas. They have been waiting a thousand years for God to act, for God to speak to Mary and enter into their world. And this angel was coming and saying to Mary, Mary, this is no ordinary time. Now is the time. Now is the time, not for your engagement, but now is the time for God to act. And God is going to act in you, Mary. When you give birth, it is going to be a Kairos moment. I am going to enter the world. Like I said, we long for God 
to act like that again. Now in this ordinary time that you and I live in, we don't want minutes or hours or days or weeks to pass by without God acting. We want God to act now. And we cry out for God to turn our ordinary time into sacred time and claim it for his purposes and to have his promises fulfilled in us, through us, around us, for us. But here's another thing about Kairos time. Kairos time often leaves us confused and afraid. I mean, look at Mary. (laughs) How can this be? I I don't understand. God, I hear you saying you want to act, but me? (laughs) No, no. And a little bit startled even. I mean, quite frankly, an angel comes into my room. I'm thinking I might be a little bit nervous. How about you? Even, Even when we are looking and hoping and longing for God to act, We often find ourselves like Mary that when God does act, we're startled. We're a little confused. We aren't always sure how to respond. We don't always understand. But even though Mary couldn't understand what was going to happen, and she didn't even completely understand why God was picking her, she responded. I guess often how it is in our own lives. We might even ask, God, why now? Why me? God, are you sure that we're going to get this right? I'm not prepared. I'm nervous. I'm I'm a little afraid of what this might mean for me. Somehow, we always think that if we had more time, if we had more insight, we'd be better prepared when God shows up. But friends, I just want to tell you, we never know when God's going to show up. We only know that he will. That's it. We can always trust that promise. That's why Paul reminds Timothy of this simple fact that he uh, is instructing him in his second letter. He says, be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Because you never know. So what if we came to each time in our lives, each moment of our lives, expecting Jesus, expecting Jesus to show up, expecting to encounter his presence, expecting him in our midst? John Chisholm has a a great song that I I love um, that is entitled, I Come Expecting Jesus. I come expecting Jesus to meet him in this place. I come expecting to receive his mercy and his grace. I mean, the song is beautiful. It just goes on and on. But what if you came expecting to discover Jesus in the time you're in right now? Wouldn't that change everything? Because here's the last thing that we know about Kairos time. All time can be Kairos time. Time is not something that you and I own. It's not something we create. It's not something that we control. Time is something that you and I move in. It is always a gift of our creator God. It's not something that we can somehow shape. It belongs to God. It's used for God's purposes. And when that happens, then all time can be Kairos time. All time can be that time when we are ready to meet God. All time, ordinary time, can become a sacred encounter with the holy. And when we're willing to meet God as Mary was, we're able to be obedient just as she was and be forever sacred as we glorify God. This time, this moment right now, is that Kairos moment for someone. This is God's time for you. This is a sacred time for God to act in your life. To remind us of those Kairos moments, we we often take those ordinary times and, and we 
we try to shape them to make us aware. We, we make them be like meal or prayer before meals or communion liturgies or weddings or baptisms or funerals or rites of passage or Sabbath days. But all of these ordinary routines and moments in life, they remind us of God's presence, but it's not what we do in them that makes them sacred. It's God's activity in them that makes them holy. So God is acting right now in your ordinary time. God is present with you right now, inviting you, seeking you to join him in this time and in this moment that this ordinary moment might become a Kairos moment for you. A time sacred to God and for each other. And that's actually our first challenge. It's a challenge for us to become aware of God in our chronos time, that it might become sacred. That it might be a moment when we can meet God and have God act in our lives. That it might become sacred, not because of anything we've done, but because of what God is doing in us. Second challenge might be to consider living one whole week as if every moment was a Kairos moment. Every moment you were looking for God, every moment you were inviting God to be present and to reveal himself with you. Think what that would change in your interactions with others and how it would change your relationships and how it would prepare you in this season of Advent for the coming of Christ. Third, what would it look like in your life to set aside an established time, a routine, if you will, a time to set aside for God to act in a specific way to prepare you for that celebration. How, how might you be better prepared to receive him? Maybe you'll set a time, a, t a time for a meditation or devotion. Maybe you'll spend some time every day in God's word. Maybe you'll just spend some time being still. Or fourth, what if you made Christmas Eve in your home with your family or friends, that ordinary space and that ordinary time? What if you made it not just a memorable moment? What if you invited God to be present with you and it became a sacred moment? You know, this, this Christmas Eve will be different. We'll not gather in places and light candles all in one space. But we're preparing worship kits for you that you can have communion where you are and light your candles where you are. And together, together we will meet the Christ who is born to be amongst us, to be God with us. It's going to be a Kairos moment when God enters in. May that moment begin now, right where we are. Let's pray. God, we invite you to this time. We invite you into our presence, not because you are not already here, but by inviting you, we are making room in our hearts, in our lives, in our time for you to be revealed. We expect you, O oh God. May you shape us and form us. And may this time, may this ordinary time be holy and pleasing unto you. Amen. If faith can move the mountains, let those mountains move. We come with expectation, waiting here for you. Waiting here for you. Your 
the promise that is woven into that song uh, that not I am waiting here or you are waiting here but we are waiting here for God to show up in a way that is profound but that unites us closer with God and closer with each other this song is not about an individual act but a corporate act a communal act of waiting for God to show up to move to be present with us and for generations, the church has made a point of celebrating this act of we, of being together in the space of waiting, waiting for God to move and connect and to transform us in that space. A moment that we now call the passing of the peace, a time to connect with those around us and with our God, with a peace that surpasses all understanding, that offers us life and peace and joy. And so we want to take a moment to celebrate that, to share that sign of peace with those around us. And so you can do that by sending a text to a friend or a family member, putting their name in the comments, even sharing the message. But it's our space to be able to connect and share as together we wait here together for our God to show up and to move. And so I hope you'll join us in that act of worship through sharing God's peace with those around us. And as you do that, I want to quickly just share a couple of things that are coming up, all of which are related to Christmas Eve. And so Pastor John in his message talked about, we want to be able to equip and be able to give out ways for us to worship, even in our homes with communion and with candle lighting, to be able to engage in this space, to accept that challenge to be the church everywhere we are. And so we want to invite you to come by our church on December the 20th, that's a Sunday, to be able to grab your worship kit. 
what you can take home with you so you can engage with us. You can still worship with us on our Christmas Eve times, which I'll share in a moment, but this is your way to be able to have those tangible, those tactile, those physical acts that connect you with those that maybe you don't see in front of you, but are worshiping together in the same sort of way. So on the 20th, please swing by the church to pick those up. We'll have more information coming out. So check out for Pastor John's e-note and on our social media as we share that information out. And again, I want to invite you to add one more challenge on your plate to be able to help us share and spread the word of Christmas Eve. It's coming up and we have several different times to gather on Facebook at our 9, 11, 3, 5, 7, and 9 o'clock services. We're going to be gathering together for worship on Facebook and the middle services of those, the uh, the nine, no, let me take that back. The 11, the three, the five, and the seven, we're going to be having our living room, which is an opportunity to gather, to have some fun, some conversation, maybe some special guests will pop in, but it's our way to gather and have fun in that sort of way. And so we hope you'll join us for any of those. Invite a friend. This is a great year to invite a friend because the bar is low. I mean, the risk is low, right? But we can still be able to gather and have fun in that way. And so join us for any of those services, specifically the ones with the living room. We're excited to worship and to gather in that way. And so we'll have stuff on our social media as well to pass and share that along if you'll join us in that invitation and challenge. But with that, I'll pass it back over to Pastor John as he sends us out with a word of blessing. Now is the time. Now is the time for the Lord our God to act. The Lord that we have met in this time, in this place of worship, the Lord who loves you more than you could ever ask or imagine the one who is desperately in love with you, he has come to act in your life today. May you experience his presence in all of your time today. May it be a Kairos moment. May it be one that you just sit and are in his presence. We pray this peace, we pray this love, we pray this joy be with you today and always, amen.